welcome to the Mobile UX Marathon, a series of weekly webinars on how to improve your user experience and conversion rate on the mobile web. Today's webinar is on qualitative and quantitative research methods. We introduced our maturity framework in our last webinar, and in today's webinar, we'll dive deeper into the most popular part of CRO and look at how that relates to each stage of that maturity model. Please share your questions with us on the UX Marathon website and later dial into our live stream to see those questions be answered. The website also has more information around upcoming uh, live streams, resources, decks and so on. And the link for that is in the video description below. Before I begin, I'd like to introduce myself. Hello, uh, my name is Louise. I work in the mobile UX team based in Dublin. I work with our largest customers uh, in the UK and across EMEA. Um, I work across all different verticals, including travel, finance, retail, gaming, and so on. I have a background in UX, analytics, and CRO. So here is an overview of today's agenda. I'm just going to do a really quick refresh on the CRO maturity model and a CRO process. Um, I'll give a definition of what qualitative and quantitative research is, just so we're super clear. And then I'll go through qualitative and quantitative research methods based on that maturity model again. So if you watched my previous webinar, you'll be familiar with this slide. This is our CRO maturity model, which maps out the CRO factors that determine a business maturity. Today, I'm going to talk more about one of the factors that we looked at as part of that model, which is insight methods. This is something I think people confuse CRO to be. It is part of CRO, but it's not CRO in totality. So if you do these activities and ignore the other factors, such as processes and strategy, it's likely that at some point you could get stuck and struggle to make progress with regards to your CRO. It's like building a house without the proper foundations. Eventually, you'll start to see the cracks. So. When we look at the CRO process, you'll see it's broken into three parts, qualitative, quantitative, and heuristics. Today, I'm gonna to talk you through qualitative and quantitative insight methods based on the maturity model. So essentially, what type of activities should you be doing based on where you sit within that maturity model or framework? And by sticking to the activities that are within your maturity, you are far more likely to get the results that you're looking for and grow. So here you can see I've broken the maturity model out by qualitative and quantitative research. I want to emphasize the fact that you can mix and match between these different activities. My list is purely just a guide and it's not something that should really be followed word for word. What we're going to do is look at the type of insight methods that companies could do based on their maturity. We've compiled, compiled this list for you purely for today's webinar as a reference. So we know that some activities um, can vary depending on different factors and every company is different. Zero is a repeatable process that gives you insight into where your problem is, what the problem is, and an understanding of your customer's mind. Then the typical outputs um, from these activities are insights, which you're then able to apply to your site and improve the conversion. As with other factors, there are no shortcuts. You can't be doing advanced research methods without first learning the basics. So before I begin, please remember, do not try all of these activities at once. We recommend that you start with one or two activities and preferably the ones that you're more familiar with and then stay working with them until you get results, repeated results, not once off potential flukes and um, demonstrate the consistency in the insight that you're receiving and then the subsequent impact. Aim for quick wins that help get uh, buy in, uh, focus on key problem areas. This is where you should see a big improvement in the user behavior. So that definition that I, I mentioned, here it is. Um, qualitative research is conducted through observation and inquiry, while quantitative research is conducted through data, measurement, analysis, and comparison. So essentially, quantitative research will tell you the what, while qualitative research will tell you the why. So please do remember, both sets of activities complement each other, and both should be adapted as part of your CRO insight methods. Um, okay, so let's look at the maturity model. Let's look at a nascent, um, a nascent client uh, and quantitative research methods that they can do. Um, so again, this is just a starting point. Um, please feel free to mix and match these activities um, based on the, the knowledge that you have in your business. We would always encourage you to do both qualitative and quantitative research. As mentioned in the previous slide, quantitative research will tell you the what and qualitative research will tell you the why. So they really do go hand in hand and complement each other. So first off, when it comes to quantitative research, please make sure that your data is clean, accurate and up to date. 
There is nothing worse than making decisions based on unreliable data. I would invest time in making sure that whatever tool you are using to capture your data is accurate and reliable. I would ensure you have a minimum of three months of reliable data before you start to actively review it to understand the user's behavior. I would also avoid making quick decisions based on data. Every case is different, but in general, I would avoid reacting right away to a negative metric unless it's repeated and it starts to become a trend. You would be surprised by the amount of people who react solely based on bounce rate and don't cross reference it with other data points such as time on page. They are so focused on that one metric that they miss the full picture and the overall pattern of behavior. You want to start collecting data that is providing you with good overview of your user's behavior. I would set up alerts to notify you if there is any kind of sudden spikes or, or drops in key metrics. Um, but be aware, reacting right away isn't always the best action, but being informed is. So um, let's look at qualitative research for nascent. So qualitative research methods can be done on a more kind of ad hoc basis at this stage. So for example, guerrilla user testing, which is the less official version of user or usability testing. And it's a fantastic way of gaining further insight into your user's experience of your website. User testing, both official and guerrilla, should be part of your overall CRO cycle and not something that's only done on a new feature or you know when a page goes live. At every stage, Age, users should be asked their opinion on new designs, features, and prototypes, etc. The insights gained from this should be documented, and the quantitative research should take this insight into account to determine how common this behavior is within the data. For guerrilla user testing, rather than recruiting users and interviewing them in labs, you could ask colleagues, friends, or family to test out features and provide feedback. What is important is that one, they're honest, they have the correct devices and preferably they're in the right environment for using that device. You could also start adding pop-ups to specific pages on your site. Um, if a user, for example, lands on a page and then they go to leave, you could create a pop-up or an alert to ask the user for feedback or to rate their experience on your website. As part of our audits, we regularly do user testing to determine whether the pain points that we have identified match the user's opinion, and we then compare the results to what we see in the data. When we run design sprints, user testing is done before, during, and after. So for emerging, um, let's look at quantitative research. So if you identify as emerging, these would be some of the minimum quantitative insight methods that we'd recommend that you do. Um, the first one would be A-B testing. I cannot emphasize enough how important this is. Um, so this is one of the most important insight methods. Um, A-B testing is where you show two variants of the same web page um, to do two different segments of website visitors at the same time, and then you compare which variation drives more conversions. After you've done all of your research and you've gathered your insight, you need to test whether you're in line with what your users are, are thinking. You do this by testing your ideas on a small demographic on your website. This ensures that you don't make changes to your site that the users don't like and therefore safeguard yourself against financial loss. A-B testing should always be done before making any changes to your website. Heat maps provide a visual summary of information. You can have different types of heat maps on a page. Um, you need to select which form works best for you. These methods in isolation don't tend to bring too much insight. It's a combination of different data points that start to build that picture. And there's different types of, of heat maps and they include mouse movement, scroll maps and click maps. And then we have user segmentation. This is where you identify the different behaviors from your users and group them accordingly. This is super important for running your A-B tests. You need to know who it is that you're targeting and why. And last but not least, by far my favorite, I, actually no, A-B testing is, but event tracking will come second. Um, event tracking is super important. Um, it's a way of uh, tracking clickable features on your website. So event tracking can give you incredibly valuable insight on how your users are interacting within your, your page, your web page. So connected, um, or sorry, no, emerging, um, qualitative research. 
So the, the types of research methods here could include user testing. So we've covered this in the previous slide, but what we're talking about here is doing more serious official user testing, perhaps rent an actual lab so you can observe the users, um, be more targeted with the type of users and try and get the users who fit in with your segments. Um, this is a great way of understanding that demographic further. Video recordings. Video recordings can really help eliminate guesswork by recording real visitor um, behavior on your site. By seeing your visitors clicks, taps and mouse movements, you can identify usability issues on the fly and then the issues that they might encounter. Surveys, um, they can provide you with an opportunity to directly ask your users questions around their experiences on your site. Surveys should be um, targeted based on the user segments, if possible, so that your questions are relevant um, to them. And then card sorting. This is a technique that involves asking users to organize information into a logical group. This is really helpful for improving the information architecture on your site. You can even combine user testing and card sorting together. So connected businesses, they should be pretty confident in both qualitative and quantitative insight methods. Um, so for, for quantitative, their data and tracking should be strong. Um, they'd have an awful lot of event tracking in place. Um, they would have dedicated resources just for this. Their senior management would typically have an overview of, of different reports, which provide um, kind of impact, high level impact of the CRO activities. And they would be at a stage where they can actually start calculating metrics such as customer lifetime value. Then qualitative research, it would be normal for a connected company to start digging deeper into their analysis and start doing the likes of eye tracking. This is a great way to see how your users scan a page and whether they are seeing the key propositions and the call to actions, etc. Then you have user interviews. And these are a fantastic method of research. They are a great method to use on an ongoing basis, but in particular, before you start designing for a new product or a feature, because you're getting users input very early on. If you repeat the interviews after a new feature is launched, it can really help to determine the success. They're a great way of finding more about the rationale behind the user behavior. And then email surveys, well, they're a really good way of finding out what your users think about something in particular, be it a new feature, a page, or even just your website as a whole. I'd avoid doing these surveys unless you've done an awful lot of research beforehand around the target audience and then the questions that you might ask them. It should really be on a very specific topic. Um, it could be seen to, to, to use this as an annoyance if you were not to you know, correctly target them. So I would make sure that if you're doing this, you do do it right. Focus groups, and um, they're very similar to user interviews, except they're in a group setting. So depending on the reason for the focus group, it can be a good idea to bring in the likes of card sorting as an activity. And just to gain that further insight while you have the users in the room, it can be really useful. And then multi-moment, so they are again our experts. Um, so a multi-moment business will be incredibly advanced in both qualitative and quantitative research. They really don't need me providing them with this type of a list. Um, they have gathered all of the data, they have analyzed it, and um, they would be super advanced. They would be very good at personalization um, and personalizing the user experience um, based on certain criteria. So that's it. Um, just to summarize, don't try all of these activities at once. Remember, this is purely just a guide. If you're in a position to combine activities from different maturity stages, do. Um, we can't emphasize enough the importance of both qualitative and quantitative um, insight activities simultaneously, and always use A-B testing to justify implementing your findings. Make sure you don't get too comfortable just leaning on the same one or two insight methods. Be aware of all the different types and then depending on the user challenge, choose the correct one accordingly. Here are some useful resources. Um, these will be shared on the website beside the video, so please do go and, and take a look. Um, the qualitative and quantitative insight methods will also be available to download as a PDF. Um, we will have a live stream. Um, during the live stream, we're going to cover um, the CEO mobile checklist, the CRO um, maturity model framework Q&A, um, and then the qualitative and quantitative methods of research Q&A. So please, 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 please submit your questions um, and we will make sure that we answer them live on air. And depending on what the questions are, we might even, might even bring in some guest speakers um, to help answer them for you. So please don't be shy and please do submit them. Um, it's really important that we customize the live streams as much as possible. 
that's it for me. And um, thank you so much for watching this video. Um, you can find more of your re the resources on the website and you can download this presentation and the Mobile UX Marathon website um, has all of the information and the resources that we discussed today. Thank you very much.